Hello and welcome back. In this section, we will take a look at DynamoDB streams. We will enable DynamoDB streams for our user table and also see AWS's SES service, which is nothing but AWS's service to send emails. SES stands for Simple Email Service. So using this service, you can just simply send emails to users. Now, if you remember DynamoDB streams, help capture all the modifications, creation, deletions that we do in our table at item level. And this happens in almost real time. So you can capture these events and send it to a Lambda function or trigger a Lambda function based on these events, just like we have been triggering HTTP events and then capture the data and send an email. So in our example, we will try to capture the insert event uh, whenever we create a new user and send an email to the user. Now a few things that AWS mentions in their documentation for DynamoDB streams is each stream record appears exactly once in the stream. So AWS tries to make sure that each record appears exactly once in the stream and they also maintain the time order of these changes. So item that is changed or created first will appear first in the event stream. And also they keep this information stored in the system for up to 24 hours. So for example, if your Lambda function is not up and is not able to capture the event in real time, that information will still stay in the system for up to 24 hours and DynamoDB stream will keep on emitting that event and once your lambda function is up within this time frame, it will be able to capture that change and process it. So let's go back to our code and start making these changes. So back to my serverless YAML file here. The first thing we need to do to enable DynamoDB stream for our table is to add stream specification. And under the stream specification, we need to add the stream view type. Now, now if you look at the demo to be uh, stream specification documentation, now there are four kind of stream view type that you can set in your uh, DynamoDB stream. There are other options. You can get just the keys of the changed item. If you don't need all the data, you can just get the new image or the new uh, data from the item after the change or you can get the old item that was before the change was made. So I'm going to copy new and old images. Paste it here. That's all. That's all it takes to enable DynamoDB streams in your table. Now, once the streams are enabled, we need to capture these events. So to capture these events, we need a new function. Going to add a new function. Let's, let's, let's copy this one and paste it here. I'm going to call this function as notify user because we are going to send an email to the user whenever modification is made. Oh, I'm going to call it notify user. Let's keep it same. Sends modification information to user. Now coming to events. So till now we have been using HTTP type events, but now the event will change to DynamoDB stream. So the event is stream here. Let me just remove these. Uh, we'll keep the role. Now the type of stream here is DynamoDB. And then we need to specify the ARN of the stream. Now the DynamoDB table has an ARN um, 
whenever you create a global secondary index or index it has its own ARN now DynamoDB stream will have its own ARN which uniquely identifies this resource type now ARN we can capture this ARN using the function attribute so we want to choose the get attribute First, we need to get the ARN to the table and then the stream ARN. And this role should already have uh, access to the stream because we put a star after the user table name. Here. Okay, so we have a new notify user function which gets triggered by DynamoDB stream event and stream originates from users table and here's the ARN to that stream. So this connects our function to the stream and of course we have provided the permission to access the stream. So the next step is to create notify user function. Let's go to user.js. Let's just copy the get user. Okay, let's make the changes. Let's rename the function to notify user. Uh, we'll still get the event you want you can json stringify the event to see what this event contains you will see that in logs after triggering the event in fact let's do that first let's keep let's remove everything we are not going to return anything we are going to send emails so we can get rid of return here all right let's just see what the event contains okay this looks good I'm going to go back to my CLI and redeploy my code so deployment is done okay so now we just want to capture the event from DynamoDB stream so for example let's go ahead and um, probably create a new user and see what happens so to create a new user, I'm going to just just create a new user with email ID, a simple email ID here. Okay, and send. Now this should have triggered our DiamondDB stream event and Lambda should have captured it and we should have something logged in for the event data. So back to our logs, you can see so the stream captured the event of new user creation and we have something in the logs i made a mistake again let's go back to code fix the error and redeploy so the deployment is done let's go back to postman and create a new user once again with a new email ID. Let's go back to logs. And this time we have our event captured. So this is how our event looks like. We'll get the records and then we get the event name. So this time it was a new user creation. That's why the event name is insert. And this is the event name um, that we are going to capture and then send an email uh, by you know identifying the event type insert modify etc and send an email to the user we are also getting the email so this is an array so you can expect so if there are multiple changes 
uh, in a short amount of time you can expect this records array to have multiple uh, events sent via stream okay so let's go ahead make more changes let's try to capture the event and send an email to user now first thing we need to capture is uh, now records come in array so let's start a for loop We'll pick each record that comes in and if item dot event name is equal to insert if it's a new user creation then we send the email right we get the email id and send the email now the user information will be inside item dot dynamo db dot new image yep so for each record we have dynamo db and then the new image and under new image we can fetch first name last name and also the email so the next part we want to send the email to user right here to send the email we will use the aws's ses uh, sandbox environment so by default you will not be able to send email to email ids which are not registered or whitelisted in your sandbox you will have to request aws to provide you full access full production access so that you are able to send emails out freely of course there will be some limits but you need to request aws once your uh, testing is done your product is ready and you want to go live you can ask them to unlock your SES account so that you can send emails but till then you will have to whitelist all the email ids that you are going to use for your testing purposes in your SES account so let's go to our SES service so under services you can search for SES Amazon simple email service and in the menu you can go to configuration under verified identities I've created an identity I've used my own email ID you can add another email ID your own email ID here to select email enter your email id here whatever it is and then send the email so you'll get an email from aws that you need to you, you just need to click on the verification link and that email id will get added here so you will only be able to send emails from verified email ids and to the verified email ids so if you want to create one email id for sending the email and three or four email ids uh, to receive emails as test users you can go ahead and create them but you should own those email ids and uh, because you are going to get the verification link from aws now once you're done with your testing and everything and ready to go live you can go ahead and ask you can go to dashboard um, here you can see that account is in sandbox mode once you're ready to go live you can request production access um, AWS support team is going to ask for a bunch of uh, details from you you can just keep on writing those details um, what's the purpose of your emails uh, what's your application about use case description etc uh, some contact information etc and you need to agree to AWS's services terms and that's it you submit a request they might get back to you with more questions and then you have to just simply provide those answers and eventually you'll get the access for now we are going to use sandbox access so i have one email id verified here i'm going to use this one let's go back to our serverless yaml file 
So in several CMF file, I'm going to add my environment variable here, email from address, and set the email ID I verified as value. And this email ID is now available to all my functions. Now, now at the root level, I'm going to create another folder. Let's name it email. And I'm going to create another file called email.js. So I'm just going to create um, a reusable code here to send my emails using SES service. So first thing I need to do is import aws.ses um, class here. And I want to set us west to region here because this is a region where I have whitelisted my email ID. And after that, I'm just going to copy a send email function Just to save some time now this function takes in three parameters here like uh, you need to send the email id to whom you are sending the mail the subject and the message itself now now we're going to use SES services send email function provided by aws and we're going to send all these parameters that we set here now parameters include destination uh, we are going to set the two addresses if we're sending the email then we are going to add the message now the message can be a html message which needs to be in html format here or a simple text message so in our case we are sending a simple text message here and then i'm adding the subject now all these things we are passing to the function so we'll just grab it from here and set it in the parameters then of course we need to set the from email id which is a source and ping it we just set it in our serverless yaml file and this is optional you can also set a reply to addresses here and then i'm simply sending my mail with all the parameters now and here if the response is true i'm just logging a success message and if not i'm logging uh, the status has uh, failed here i'm returning the status has failed here that's it and if there's any error i'm catching them here and logging them let's also export this method now let's go back to a user.js file and use our method let's import our newly created send text email method here let's move this email id folder under functions and now here under my notify user function i have all the user information all i need to do is call the send text email function with user's email id uh, this is a subject and then i've added a small message with user's first name and last name so whenever a new user gets created we capture the insert event from dynamodb stream we also get all the records that got modified changed or deleted and then capture the user's information, captures the email ID, and send the email. Now if we get response status as success, we just log a success message, otherwise we know that email sending failed. Now because we are sending an email to user, we also need to provide our Lambda function access to SES service. So, so all we need to do is add CS access to our policies. I'll go to the bottom. So this is a list. You can see we have two statements added already. 
I'm just going to add another one. Right here. Which will allow my function to access SES service and send email. So everything looks good here. Let's go back to our CLI and deploy our code. So our deployment is complete here. Let's clear my screen. Let's go back to our postman. So I'm going to create a new user once again with the email ID or the primary key as anchor at udemy.gmail.com, which is our whitelisted uh, or verified ID in SES. Let's go ahead and create the user. So user has been created. Let's check if he received an email. And this time we have received the email from AWS. You can see we have the reply to at rest and you can see that the mail came through Amazon SES service. So that was a simple example of how you can use DynamoDB streams and capture different modify insert delete events for your items and process them. Thank you and I'll see you in the next lecture.